Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion, this time for December 6, 2022. It's been a while since I've recorded, but I might as well try to get back into the thick of things as I am trying to kind of build myself for the near future of what could potentially be severe weather season on the horizon. But for right now, we do have something interesting coming up next week. Uh, the potential for severe weather is possible across portions of eastern Oklahoma and northeastern Texas again, as well as the surrounding areas like Missouri, Kansas, Arkansas, and Louisiana. So once again, 15% chance for severe weather by the Storm Prediction Center on Monday. That could fluctuate between one of those two days, Monday or Tuesday, as you see up at the top. You see it's from Monday to Tuesday. So uh, it's a little far away at this time, but the potential for severe weather is possible across some of these areas. Before we get into the video, please be sure to leave a like to help me spread this out with more and more people and subscribe if you are new. So let's go ahead and get into the models here and we'll shift it off with our tropical tidbits version. I don't exactly have weather bell at the moment. And so we are going to run with what we currently have. And you can see we're gonna be using the GFS model with tropical tidbits. The time is down below in Z time, so uh, I'll just have to kind of interpret for you as to what time of day it is. But up until the beginning of next week, we have some showers and thunderstorms that are anticipated to kind of move on through across much of the central and eastern portions of the United States. That includes New England, as well as down towards the Appalachians and even further towards the Ozarks. So a lot of rain there, a lot of snow back in behind this as well. Another burst of severe weather or at least maybe some localized weather possible in towards St. Louis and the surrounding areas near the Ohio River sometime on Thursday before a new batch of winter weather starts to move on through here on Thursday night into Friday morning, especially for areas near the Cascades and further down south towards the Sierra Mountains. So that'll be something to note. There are a lot of rain, a lot of snow that is possible. That'll continue into Saturday, Sunday. And then here we go, coming into Monday, a developing low pressure system begins to form over here, or it actually starts to really gain traction sometime around Monday into Tuesday, have a lot of precipitation that start to form out in front of it, a lot of snow on the backside, so anticipate anywhere on the western side of the low pressure to get a plethora amount of snow. And then this is where things start to get really interesting because as we transition from Monday into Tuesday, you see that we have a big deepening low pressure system, meaning we could have some very strong damaging winds associated with snow that could lead to potentially blizzard conditions over here for portions of the central to northern plains. And then our leftover cold front and or dry line, whatever that may be, could bring some severe weather here on Tuesday for those very same areas that that risk area from the Storm Prediction Center highlighted. We'll move off over here towards pivotal weather. We'll move to our wind shear map with our uh, jet stream at 500 millibars. This is about six kilometers above ground level, and this is really our upper level wind shear. You see up until the point of the beginning of next week, we don't really have a whole lot of high values of wind shear, and so that continues to maintain until we get into the beginning of next week, Sunday into Monday. Those yellow and red contours really start to become pretty vibrant here, and this will begin to form our nice low pressure system that's really gonna just kind of build all of this up all together and be this dual threat of winter weather in the north and severe weather in the south. Combining with the very strong wind shear here from our jet stream, this is really going to be a, uh, a pretty gusty event, whether you're up north or down south. Now, we do have some uh, relatively moist dew points along with this, so pairing with our wind shear that does uh, help kind of sustain our thunderstorms with ventilation. We also have our moisture content, which is where a lot of these thunderstorms actually get their um, sustainability from. You need moisture in order for just rain to really occur in general. And uh, because we do have that, we have high levels of moisture throughout the majority of the area from Monday into Tuesday. Uh, we see a lot of these blue contours here and even darker blues which do indicate that we do have enough moisture for severe weather within the area. That'll kind of continue as well, even on to Wednesday to where it starts to become more of a damaging wind threat here as it pushes across. So uh, something really interesting to note, can we get those severe storms on Monday to kind of use up that moisture or will the moisture continue to linger, which I do think that is going to actually be the case regardless if we get thunderstorms or not 
And uh, could we get a new batch of severe thunderstorms along that cold front and or dry line that'll move on through from Tuesday into Wednesday? Now, looking at this here real quickly, this is our vorticity content uh, within the atmosphere from the GFS model. And this is where things kind of get really interesting to me because as we get from Sunday into Monday, we notice that we're starting to get our low pressure system to start to build somewhere in here, but it'll start to become really prominent as we get towards the 0Z uh, Tuesday area, which is about 6 o'clock central, 5 o'clock mountain. And right about there is where our low pressure is, similar to what we saw with our uh, precipitation type contours earlier on in the video. And we also see these little bands of vorticity that kind of stretch out just like this. And if we can get these bands to be a lot more, I want to say sporadic, those could actually be the ones to form your showers and thunderstorms, and that could create your bona fide severe weather event. And uh, we do have one that kind of goes through the area over here in northeastern Texas, so that might be something to watch out for as this continues to progress. But we are a bit far away, and the models have a trend to kind of move further and further east over time. So it may not be just the area over here in Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, and Arkansas. We could be talking about areas a little bit further east as well. So it's all about what happens over the next, I would say, two to three, maybe even four days before we start to really talk about what this cold front and this dry line could do that we are mentioning on Tuesday that could uh, cause a bit more of your linear damaging wind threat. So uh, other than that, we do have a very strong low pressure system. As you guys can tell, a lot of vorticity around this area. The vorticity is caused by all this wind shear and the deepening of this low pressure system, which is going to cause a lot of strong damaging, uh, strong damaging winds, excuse me, regardless of what all happens. So that is going to be it here for this short update. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, especially if I do think this event will be significant enough to impact people and or property. If it does end up trying to produce tornadoes, I more than likely will be live on this, but who knows, we are quite a ways away. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.